Welcome viewers to my mod spotlight for the Portal Gun mod, a reconstructed mod for version 1.2.3 of Minecraft. If you don't already know, this mod takes heavy inspiration from the Portal game. But since its origin has grown to be a lot more than just adding the Portal Gun into Minecraft. Now the Portal Gun allows for incredibly easy transportation. You can easily just put down a portal, go off and mine as soon as you want to go back, just place down a portal on the wall you're on and you'll be instantly transported back home. Also, if you've got a spare one on hand, you can also use it as a weapon. There we go. It is rather effective. This mod can also be used to make quite clever puzzle maps. Using the portal bun, portal bun, huh, portal gun to get across quite difficult gaps. Also, the middle click will actually zoom in, allowing you to get an easy lock on targets far in the distance. You've got to remember if you are making this kind of map. Whoops. Try that again. What the blazes? Let's try that one last time. Hopefully this works as a proper demonstration. There we go. You can get across massive gaps by using the momentum like so. Just remember that if you are a mod maker, mod maker, there usually is, I mean a map maker, there are usually an easier way to get across that your viewers and playtesters might just so happen to find. Now you might have been wondering how I did actually f um, survive that drop from that massive height. That was because of these longfall boots that get added to the game. It's just crafted from two of the longfall boots. These ones aren't actually wearable. But you craft them like so, just six iron ingots and some obsidian. When worn, they don't really give much of a armor boost, but they will negate all fall damage. I better show you guys now that the generic portal gun is crafted like so, obsidian, diamond, ender pearl, and iron. While the rest of these multicolored ones, because you can have more than one portal, or more than two portals open if you're using different colored guns, are just crafted by taking the regular one and adding a certain die or bacon in the case of these ones. Now I better go over all the new items that came out in the last update. First off we've got these aerial faceplates that you might remember from the game. When jumped on they will propel you rather far without the need for a portal system or anything like that. We also have these, what do you call them, high energy pellet launchers and high energy pellet catchers. Once the catcher is actually hit by the high energy pellet, it will submit a redstone signal, a constant one unless you release the pellet by right clicking, which you can use to say power a redstone door to your house or just power these, what do you call them? <laughs> they are the weighted companion cube vent and the weighted storage cube vent. So I'll just show you how this works. Place it down, right click. Nope, why aren't you working? My mistake, the first one does have to be redstone powered to actually fire the particle. Once it's let in, there's your redstone signal, and the cubes will drop out of the vent. And you can send the particle back rather easily just by right clicking, the redstone will stop, it'll get sent back, and of course bounce straight back in. One very cool thing about this mod is that these aren't actually blocks, they won't take up any block IDs either. They actually are just cleverly coded items. Which means that when you're using the portal gun, if you press the G button, you can actually pick these up and left click to throw them. So you can use them in conjunction with say pressure plates and things like that to set up rather clever contraptions. Next up we also have the electronic intelligence indicator blocks. What these do is basically just show you whether a redstone current is activated or not, which can be rather useful if your design is complicated. As you can see, they'll be crossed out now while the particle's not in it. And as soon as the redstone is activated, they change to a tick. One other thing you might want to be careful of, this particle will actually kill you if it touches you, but you can use these blocks to deflect it away. Also, you can only have one of these blocks in existence from event at one time. Trying to grab another one will just make the old ones disappear. But that doesn't actually apply if you've created it yourself. Whoops, wrong button. There we are which is rather easily craftable just from an iron and stone. And you can get this by mixing it with a rose. Also, if you have this inside your, I believe it's hot bar, it might be inventory, it will also heal you one heart every five seconds. 
Burning the companion cube will also give you a new disc. Combining two of them together will give you another one, which will play the Valve Muse, uh, Valve clips from the actual game. And you can also get the radio loop disc by smelting one of the companion cubes discs. Next up we have the Emancipation Grid item. As you can see you can place it as high and as far away as you want, it'll just make the grid larger. I believe the limit is 32 blocks, it might be 16 between each way. What it basically does is once you walk through it, it just deactivates your portals for you, which could be an important part of a map or you might incorporate that into your house to make everything leave maybe once you enter or once you exit. Next up we have a rather clever block called the Portal Spawner. Once placed down in any kind of material, depending on what portal gun you have in your inventory, you can choose its color. I'm going to go red and yellow. And then once it's powered by redstone, it needs a new power source, I'm just going to let it back in. It'll create the portal of the corresponding color. Now you can leave the house and shoot off a portal. And you'll have it connected to your house at all times. Except, unlike the normal portal gun, you can depower it just by getting rid of the redstone current. And now finally we have the turret block, so I've set it to night time so we can get some enemies to fight here. Placing down defective turrets will only tell you where enemies are by pointing at them, they won't actually do anything. Oh, what just happened? We have the normal turrets which will actually fire against all enemies, but you should be careful because it will not discriminate between enemies and the player himself. It will shoot you if you get in front of its laser sights. Also, to destroy a turret you don't actually have to break it down, you just run into it, just like in regular portal, and it will be destroyed. Unfortunately, you do not get the block back when you do that. But still, you can use it as a rather good- whoa, that's facing me. See, that could be a problem. Sometimes they will not face the right way when you place them down, so you do have to be careful while setting them up. But they are an incredibly useful base defense, which you can place on your roof or so and they should take out anything within a certain distance. As you can see that's slightly too far away so it's not going to fire, while well, if I get in the way it definitely will. Now there is also the oracle turret but you can't actually get that in the game, there's no way to actually craft it, it's just a easter egg I suppose for people with not enough or too many items. Anyway I might as well just show you how to quickly craft everything that I didn't show you before. Electronic intelligence indicator, the turrets themselves, there's the defective turret, this is how you craft the actual sentry turret to defend your base. The portal spawner, rather expensive to say the least. Material emancipation grid, which was the grid that you went through to destroy your own portals. Well that is all viewers, I hope this video helped, Stray Mav signing off.